All right, good afternoon, everyone. Is everyone hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing. And seeing me clearly? Yeah, seeing you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So today we have a very interesting meeting for you guys. Um, we will be talking about the Black influences in psychology in the region right so today we have a very special guest and we'll you know have the introduction and all of that but before we begin i'll just call on our pr Tashika to just offer a quick word of prayer for us before we begin Ashika. I'm not sure what's up with Tashika. Denise, can you just quickly pray for us, please? All right. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again for this privilege to be on this platform once more. We thank you for all the participants that are here and our guests. I just pray, God, that you touch every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that this meeting will be successful to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Denise. So... Today we have a very interesting meeting, as I would have mentioned before, and we have a very special host. So without further ado, I'll just allow Denise to come and offer the introduction and we'll get straight into it. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So Dr. Kai Morgan, she's a registered clinical psychologist in Jamaica with a doctorate in clinical psychology obtained from Carlos Albizu University, and she wears many hats. She worked as a clinical psychologist at the UAE as a lecturer and the University Hospital of the West Indies as a consultant in the Department of Community Health and Psychiatry. In 2016, she moved into the entrepreneurial world to include a private practice and consultancy work and other business endeavors. She is currently the immediate past president of JAMSEC, the co-chair of the Professional Practice and Standards Committee of the Caribbean Alliance of National Psychological Association, or CANPA, among other things. Her interests for both research and clinical practice include trauma, sexual behavior, couples or relationship dynamics, assessments, and Caribbean psychology. And she enjoys consultancy work in the areas of research, training, and supervision. So at this time, let us welcome Dr. Kai Morgan. Greetings, greetings everyone. Um, greetings. Thanks for the invite. Um, I am going to share my screen and just see if I can go through this um, presentation where we're looking at Caribbean psychology, black psychology in general, right? It's um, trying to keep it really short and sweet. So, um, <laughs> and then you'll get the point, right? So you'll get the point. Um, okay, so, and I'm really, I'm really glad that you guys have decided to, to really focus on, on this, you know, given Black History Month, because we don't often hear, and in your studies, and in your future studies, it's very unlikely, so unless things change, you are nearing your future studies, so it's unlikely that you will hear really a lot about some of these giants in psychology that have changed the face and have done quite a bit of work on um, in the area that we don't often hear about. So I'm going to start with looking at some of the African-American psychologists who kind of came before before the Caribbean ones that we know of, right? And I say, you know, I say it like that because there's always there's always scholars and gurus and um, trailblazers that sometimes we don't hear about them because of the media that we are exposed to at the time, right? So 
so I wanted to kind of go through a little bit the African American and then go through some of the Caribbean psychologists, the Jamaican psychologists, and the Caribbean psychologists that have shaped the field. So, so Joseph White, that's number one right there in the image. He is known as the godfather of black psychology. He was the first to outline a psychologist specifically for black people and advocated for racial and cultural differences to be considered in how we conceptualize psychology, right? And then we have Inez Prosser at number two, who is the first African-American woman to receive her PhD. Her dissertation looked at academic development in African-American children in mixed and segregated schools, right? Then we have um, Augustine Nsamenai, and he's at number three, and he's a, he was an immigrant, right? He was an immigrant um, from Ghana to the UK, and he was dedicated to having African voices and perspectives heard in the field of developmental psychology. Um, he is the one that's known, you may have heard of the seven stages of selfhood and other theories of, of development. His work is um, seminal in the text, human development in cultural context, in a cultural context, a third world perspective. Then we have Mamie Clark. She's somebody you may have heard of, right? Mamie Clark is famous for her work on racial identity. Um, when you think about the studies with the, with, the, um, with the dolls and looking at the dolls, you may have heard of this one and looking at the dolls and asking, you know, which one do you like? And looking at issues of racial identity and self-esteem, that's her. And um, she found basically in her tests and in her research that many African-American children um, were diagnosed incorrectly with learning disabilities due to the biases in psychological testing at that time. So she was big into testing and looking at, um, again, racial identity, as you imagine, a number of them would have been yeah, at that time, would it be the topical issue? And it's right there, still a topical issue now. So that's Mamie Clark. Um, then we have Franz Fanon. Franz Fanon was actually born in Martinique. Um, so he is a Caribbean, a son of the Caribbean. And he was a psychoanalyst. Um, he was very big on psychoanalysis. And um, in his book, Black Skin, White Masks, he explored just what that, I don't know if you've heard about the roast breadfruit psychosis. That's one of our premier psychiatrists, Professor Frederick Hicklin, who died in 2020. Um, he it is this similar kind of concept. So black skin, imagine it. Like what, you, what else would we say? We'd say Oreo cookie, right? It's the other way, right? But the black, no, it's the same way. Black, black on the outside white um with a with a white mask and that's what he talked about he talked about that dilemma and again racial issues of racial identity really he also wrote wretched of the earth naeem akbar naeem akbar is actually one of my favorites he is one of my all-time um favorite psychologists ever all his books, I have them, all his books I've read. And he is um, a phenomenal speaker, Naeem Akbar, clinical psychologist, um, big speaker, public speaker. And he also, um, you know, he also evaluates the dynamics of um, Eurocentric psychological tradition and how that compares to Black psychology, identified a Black psychology um, in development, in um, William Cross is another one. I don't have a picture of him here, but William Cross also, William Cross wrote the, the, the text Shades of Black. And in that text, he outlines what he calls a model of nigrescence. And that is like how we, how we become Black, how we understand our Blackness. And of course, these would all be perspectives of growing up as a minority in the, in the Americas as an African-American, right? And so a lot of their work, these six individuals and more, you know, um, are, have been powerful and focused on, focused on looking at these kinds of racial issues, right? So some of um, Akbar's great books are Chains and Images of Psychological Slavery, Know Thyself, and we could go on and on. Breaking the Chains of Psychological Slavery as well is one of my favorites, all right? Then we move over to the Jamaican psychologists, right? Back in 2018, 
And I'll tell you a little bit about CAMPA as well, the Caribbean Alliance of National Psychological Associations. We have been having conferences every two years approximately um, since 2011. And each time we have it in a different country. And in 2018, it was Jamaica's turn. And every time we have the conference, we honor our uh, the psychologists from that country. So Bahamas came before ours in Jamaica, Suriname, and also Haiti. And every time we honor those giants of psychology in those countries that have done that have done um, seminal work. And so in our turn in Jamaica, we look back on these giants for us that kind of kickstarted psychology in Jamaica. And um, these are the three big ones. Ruth Dorbar, who is um, who, who is resting in power since 2000 and about seven. She came here in the 60s. She is a Canadian um, and she came here in the 60s and really began to do a lot of work on the ground. She worked a lot with our, our local psychiatrists. I don't have psychiatrists in the list here, but psychiatrists have been and others in the mental health field have been very, very instrumental in how the field has developed. So she worked alongside people like Professor Frederick Hicklin. She worked aside, as, alongside other psychologists that have been, um, that are, some are still here today because the 1960s is not really that far, too far, right? <laughs> Late 1960s into the 70s. Marlene Hamilton, um, whereas Dr. Ruth Dorbar was more on the ground, she did a lot of clinical work. Um, Professor Marlene Hamilton was in academia. So she was in the university and did a lot of work around education and psychology and, and um, learning and, and special needs and things like that. Um, also, Janice Evans, Ilna, Janice Evans, she also is a seminal, um, a seminal psychologist, worked alongside Dr. Ruth Dorbar as well, worked on the ground in the hospital settings and developing clinics um, for intellectually disabled children. And um, she did a lot of work in that kind of area as well in the different clinics. And then these are some of what we call our trailblazers in Jamaica, right? They have been working in Jamaica in, since the 70s and the 80s. Um, and all of them are still here working in Jamaica now, right? Only Joyce Thompson, who I think is retired at this time, but Dr. Rosemary Johnson, some of you may know and know her face because she's still at the University of the West Indies. Dr. Audrey Pottinger, who is in child, who is in child, um, in the child department, department of of child and, um, and adolescents in the, U in the university hospital. She's still here. Dr. Leah Kim Samaj, you may hear him on the radio sometimes or otherwise, uh, premier public speaker. Dr. Barry Davidson of Family Life Ministries, who is still running that show and is busy as ever, can't get him any time you want to. Dr. Dennis Edwards also, you may be familiar with him. He's also been in the UE fraternity until he retired, but I think he's still doing some part-time stuff. So you may see him and you may have seen him around. Um, a little spell, misspelling is there, but um, Herbert Eldemeyer, Mr. Herbert Eldemeyer, otherwise called Barney to us, Barney Eldemeyer, he's also been in the field for a very long time, working in a lot in substance abuse. I should tell you their areas. Barry Davidson is in family family um family family psychology the name of his his group that he's had for a number of years on Cecilia Avenue's family life ministries uh, Dr. Dennis Edwards focuses has a lot of different focuses this man is a is a generalist in every sense of the word but his neuropsychology is is his is his love but he does a lot of work in disaster and disaster mental health as well and um, he does a lot of work with the disabilities communities as well. Um, Herbert Eldemeyer, as I said, is a lot. Is a lot of his work is in substance abuse, um, substance dependence, sub substance misuse. He's done a lot of work in the field in that area. And um, he's with the University Hospital of the West Indies. He may have been retired by now, but he was there up until five years ago. Dr. Valerie Freckleton. Dr. Valerie Freckleton is um, on the ground in consultancies and organizational work and clinical work as well. Um, and I, you know, Dr. Rosemary Johnson, I'm sure she's a clinical psychologist, does a lot of therapy, individual therapy, and um, is very big on um, on any on any on NER 
right? Um, she is and that is um, emotional release therapies. She's an, a, a neuro linguistic therapy and NLTs as well. Audrey Pottinger is a child psychologist and um, she does a lot of work in assessments and, and, and therapy as well and grief in particular. She's very big on grief. Dr. Leah Kim Samaj, he is an industrial organizational psychologist, a social psychologist, and his work therefore trans um, moves into the areas of training and consultancies and businesses and so on. Dr. Angela Gordon Stair just retired a couple of years ago. She's a counseling psychologist and she was with the student the, the counseling center so you may know her from any any um interactions or knowledge about the counseling center she was there for many 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 years working um Dr. Peter Weller also had been with the counseling center for a long, long time, another clinical psychologist. And he is been between right now, Trinidad and Jamaica um, doing work. But these are our Jamaican psychologists that have been, that been working here since the 60s and the 70s. I would say the 70s and the 80s actually for this, for this group. And then I wanted to also introduce you to our Caribbean Alliance, right? Our Caribbean Alliance is um, is is a group that is formed with the members that are from national associations. So in other words, the Jamaican Psychological Society, which is our national organization, is a member of CANPA. And through that organization, the organization was formed in 2013. And it's really about advancing psychology in the Caribbean, right? And so with representation throughout the region, we have been making these kind of steps for these last um nine years, almost 10 years now. So with CANPA, um, these are some of the member countries. We have 13 member countries right now. If you know your flags, you'll pick up some of them right here. There are the Bahamas, there's Jamaica, there is the United States Virgin Islands, there is, um, I did say Barbados already, yes, Barbados, there is Trinidad and Tobago, there's the Dominican Republic, there's Cuba, there's, the Do there's Dominica, and there are psychologists in these spaces. There is, um, and we are always looking to add more individuals to our cadre so that we can build build psychology in the Caribbean. Their standing committees include things like um, psychology education and training committee, which is looking again at training and 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 then hopefully the standardizing of standardization of training across the Caribbean professional practice and standards which is one of the committees that I chair that we are looking at how professional practice regulations of for practice licensure and all of that can be can be uniformed. It's a, it's a big task, but we look at these matters. There's a disaster mental health standing committee. There are other committees as well that have to do with finance and regional conference and publications, right? And these are some of the team members, you know, we see here people from Cuba, people from Puerto Rico, which is another member organization. You see Dr. Ishtar Gavaya, you may know her also. She's with the University of the West Indies. There is Dr. And these are others across the Caribbean. So there's Dr. Um, Dr. Ava Thompson on the right with the yellow jacket. She's from the Bahamas. She's actually the founding member of CANPA. Dr. Gerda Nicola, she is from Haiti. And she is one of the founding members as well. Dr. Rita Dudley Grant in front of her with the green, the green um, loop thing with the tag. Um, she is from the US Virgin Islands, St. Croix. And Dr. Ishtar Govai, who's originally from Trinidad, but lives in Jamaica and represents Jamaica as well um, in many ways in Canpa. Uh, behind Rita, Dr. Rita Dudley and Dr. Govai is Dr. Guillermo Bernal. He is originally from Cuba, but he lives in Puerto Rico with his wife behind him, who's Marisaida Sanchez. She's also involved in Canpa. Beside Marisaida is um, Maya, Maya Hymans. She is from Suriname. And so she represents then Suriname, and then in front of her is myself, and beside her is Javila Ho, who is actually our new acting president of the Jamaican Psychological Society, and Mary Bullock, who is, um, who is our representative from the U.S. At the time in this picture, she was representative from the American Psychological Association. And then to the right is Katija Khan, who is our current 
our incumbent president of Canva from Trinidad and Tobago. And um, the picture right below is uh, Professor Omawale Amulero Marshall, who is one of my heroes. He is a staunch public psychology advocate and he is um he is in Grenada so he represents Grenada even though he was born in Guyana he represents both of them sometimes and Guillermo Bernal again from Cuba is behind him who's our outgoing president of Canva and um and these are some of the faces there are many more faces I haven't named all of them I haven't touched some of our islands I haven't you know but this is this I think is a lot for you to understand and to really kind of sit with the reality that we are making waves in the Caribbean we're doing things and we are this this great field of psychology is building and growing through many of these people and many more some of these people and many more I saw a hand somewhere okay and that that ends my presentation. I think I said all of that. All right, yeah, so Han, Tasha, did you want to mm -hmm. ask a question? No. Okay, so as you guys know, February is Black History Month and a lot of times, you know, when we're learning psychology, especially in the introductory courses, we learn about the William James, the Wilhelm Bond, uh, you know, you have the Freud, you have the Rogers, and all of these persons are, well, white persons, but we don't get to see oftentimes like representation of black people within the space. So we thought it interesting to bring some attention to you know, Black people who are making waves in this realm. And it's really interesting, Dr. Morgan, to have such, you know, a saturation of psychologists within Jamaica, but not just Jamaica, but also the wider Caribbean region as well. So really, thank you. I know you have, you know, your time is very um, apportioned. So we really thank you for just taking some time out of your busy schedule to just come and share with us about, you know, the Black persons making waves as you, as you, appropriately and correctly said within the space so um thank you so much for sharing you're very welcome Go give on. thanks all right dr uh, morgan thank you so much again all right guys as i would have said uh you know february is black history month and we really couldn't end the month without acknowledging that and, you know, we're a psychology association, so we wanted to, you know, provide a spin on that, you know, showing you, you know, the influence of Black psychologists in the space. Um, now we have our guest performance for you, and I'll just allow Denise to introduce her. Uh, Denise, you're muted. All right, these devices do what they want to do sometimes. All right. Um, so our guest performer is Kimisha Campbell. Her major is political science, and she does a minor in economics. Um, currently, she is the vice president of the Writer's Circle and the public relations officer of the Uimona Governance Society. In addition, she is a faculty of social sciences mentor her hobbies include volunteering, advocating when the issue becomes greater than her fear, and sleeping. That's a good hobby. As a writer, her central themes are love, death, the life in between, and mental illness. She loves writing, and it's her way of expressing. So it's all done on a personal level. Let's welcome Kimisha Campbell. Hi, everybody. Um, Hi. Yes. Hello. All right, so yes. I brought a piece today to perform um, backstory. When I asked everybody about, you know, Black culture, it was mainly centered around one thing. So I said, all right, let me try something. So I don't, I don't think it's perfect, but yeah. All right, so let me go. So when I, when I speak of my Black culture, I'm not speaking of my black struggle only. Yes, we were captured from the bosoms of our mothers, betrayed by our brothers, forced and neglected by our fathers, all to have our sons harvested into tankless robots. Looked down for shedding a tear, but praised for the many kids he bore, but never really sure of which is his, so he neglects them. 
A cycle never unbroken, forcing our brother, our daughters to become the floor mat he puts his foot down on. Because he dare not breathe a word of pain, men must be men. And the woman simply must be women. The giver of the love she has sought and the men of the pain our sons have brought. Black women must die exhausted. Now... It was again, yes, no justice, no peace is a chant that we have acquired too many times to not remember, chanted too many times to not be a bookmark on the history that would be of the black man. But it isn't the chant of my black culture, a fragment of my reality, but not who I, the black woman, is. When I speak of my black culture, I want to hear of the kings and queens before me, not cannibals, societies, not tribes, geometrical geniuses, not magicians. Even though it might be someone enchanting how our skin captured the sun and brought the, the colors of the world. When I speak of my black culture, I speak of how I was purchased to be broken, but from the cracks I molded my new identity. Jibber jabbering words have been quite me to each corner of the world. I speak on the way my body intensifies to the beat of the drum, which later became the steel. Oh, how my kaya sits perfectly on my head, waiting for its moment to be showcased when I don't know what else to choose, but I never do. Because I'd rather be pretty than show I was someone who was bought, rather be light-skinned than, than someone who has, sought, who has sought out her identity. An identity tangled in the feeling of wanting to escape the struggle so loosely painted and embracing the true nature of my skin, even while it's tainted. This is why when I speak of my black culture, when I ask you of my black culture, I need you to, I beg you to speak life in it, into its existence and not dead. Speak de Bella Negras and tight coils, speak black women. who I, the Black woman, is. Thank you. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That was, that was truly amazing. Um, you, there were some times when you, you chipped out a little bit, but I think that the parts that oh, we did... Sorry, the internet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't know the struggle. Uh, but honestly, whoa, I, I mean, I mean, oh, I'm speechless, but that was such an amazing uh, presentation. I mean... There are no, no words. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so we, we recognize, you know, that it's Black History Month and a lot of times we don't really get to see the, you know, the more positive parts of, of that, you know, aspect of our history. I'm not, I don't know about many of you, but for me, when I was younger, um, when, you know, it was February, you normally see the slave movies that come up again and they show you the brutality of, yeah. you know, Oh, right, how Black people were treated in, you know, the pre, well, in the past. But it's just really good to have, you know, persons like Dr. Morgan and you know, Kimisha come and share with us, you know, how Black people have been really making waves and contributions within or across various realms. So, no, thank you for that, um, Kimisha. But no, we just want to transition a little bit. Um, there are some topics here or some questions. Can just have a little discussion a little bit. Um, so a lot of times, so earlier we mentioned, no problem, Pimisha, earlier we mentioned, um, you know, the fact that we're celebrating Black History Month, but I want to hear from you guys. What are some of the things that you think we, as I'm assuming all of us here are, are black people. <laughs> if I if I'm mistaken, you guys can let me know. But I'm a lot of times we've seen, you know, how we're coming from as, as a race, as a culture, right? But I want to hear from you guys. What are some of the things that you think that we have accomplished or not necessarily just accomplished, but what are some of the things that you think 
you know, black people currently still struggle with and how are some of the ways that you think we can overcome those difficulties? Anybody can just chime in. Um, <laughs> I'm just sitting and, and reflecting and even trying to answer that question. It just shows how much, I'm speaking personally, how much I do not know regarding, you know, Black people and the contributions that we make and so on. I, I know it's not safe to generalize, so I won't say all Black people, but I think one thing that some of us probably struggle with is, um, I would say not, what's the word? I don't know if it's a lack of self-confidence per se, or when it comes on to, you know, defying the odds for certain things that were somewhat restricted, we are restricted from in terms of certain things that we can achieve. Uh, many times we tend not to challenge those things or some of us because we know the whole background. But yeah, I think that's 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 it. Um, and one way that I think we can overcome that is to really learn more about what Black people have been doing and achieving so that can actually help to boost us. I agree, Denise. I agree. And one of the things that you mentioned was that we we have we face certain things and we don't really understand why. Um, I I was having a conversation with some persons earlier, and um, one of the things that we came across was you know the whole the whole black hair, and I, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but a lot of times, especially in the the school system and the, the workplace, you know. In the context of here, the, the, the simple context of here, right? And how black um, here is, is, is presented, there are many times that we are, you know, made to feel as if how we wear here is unprofessional, right? And I think it, it comes from the stance that, you know, we're, we're, we're operating based on the racial standards of or the, the beauty standards rather of the the, the prehistoric uh, quote unquote ruling or dominant race, which was you know the white race. So I think a lot of times we we still have these archaic um, standards that we we allow our per, our people to conform to, and it it in turn stifles our racial identity, right? Because a lot of times you might see persons say that it's inappropriate, for example, to wear an Afro in the workplace. And then you ask yourself, but why, is the, why is something like that inappropriate? And you really can't get that solid answer. So I think a lot of times you're dealing with things that we don't truly understand enough about it to appreciate why we're doing some of the things that we're doing. And, you know, to add to that, um, mm -hmm when as you can see i'm natural but when i was considering going natural the first thing that i thought about was is that gonna fit me you know am i gonna be you know cute with it and one day i had to look and say like how oh, my natural your work god growth i'm a scalp now go fit me and it comes to think and even when with it grown out like this i still i'm still not at the capas or the, the place where i want to wear it out you know, where it, like if me I got a dinner, I don't want to wear my natural hair or whatever. So it's still, you know, with them doing that and with less representation, you still have women, black women feeling like what they have is not good enough. You know, what you're working with is not a standard that should be attainable or should be, you know, you know, something that people can live to. So it's it's really mental, you know, slavery, I guess. But yeah. You know, when you think about learning how to be black, you have to think about learning from yourself, learning from your identity. What do you like about yourself? You know, even though when the world says you're ugly, you look big, whatever, whatever, what do you like about yourself? And we have to try, as somebody said, relearn, unlearn everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So in the context, you, you touched on it, but I just want to probe a little deeper. 
Um, what are some of the things that you think that you know black persons can do to unlearn or push back against the standards that we've been held to um, over the, the years? Um, the first thing that I would say, and a lot of people have started, is like representation matters, like with the dolls, as Miss was saying, it, it's really a big thing because when I, when, if you're growing up and you can see a doll that has Afro like you, you say, all right, she can be a princess too, right? It's not just that um, only white girls can be. Uh, Kenisha, you went out. I'm sure if her internet is open to it. And you can join like black communities, like talk about black stuff, not just always in our white people business. Talk what, <laughs> what, what, the, what the black community doing, you know, them something there. So that's how you can, you know, embrace your black blackness. I'm not saying so if we're going to be like a US people where everything is black because I'm a black, because I'm a black. No, I'm just yeah. saying educate yourself on being black. Right. And I think an understanding and an appreciation of where we're coming from as a race and just embracing our differences and not trying to stifle our individuality or try to fit into the, the contours of what has been pre-packaged for us as our beauty standards is very something that is noteworthy and it's something that um, we should constantly try to work towards or against rather. I saw a hand was up just now. <laughs> um, Janelle, your hand was up. You wanted to ask a question or say something. Okay. So what I was going to say is being said already, um, I was going to talk about, you know, we as a people in terms of we are still under the shackles of slavery. Um, so for instance, no, we, the way how our, 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 um, our politics is even is still Western. So even though we are moving forward as a people, we are still backwards because the way how we, 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 we think is still backwards. The way we think about our skin is backwards. The way how we, 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 we do things is backwards. So we, we're like, okay, I want to do this, but how will it look to you know America? How will it look to Europe? So we are still looking back at the powers that were the ones that were subjecting us or holding us in, in place. And even our last names, like we, that, that, that's, that's a condition of slavery. Right, our last name is not our own because after slavery, we didn't know where we, uh, where we came from. We lost our identity, we lost our people. So we, we have to go to ancestry.com to be basically trying to get to know each other. And as a young lady was saying before, um, we need to get to a point and we not to get to a point, we need to start advocating. It's, it needs to be a mainstream thing where we come on TV, we, we, uh, we go to schools, I will talk about, you know, getting to know each other individually for who we are, instead of just saying, okay, slavery is done and gone with, and we are not affected anymore. Because you have people who feel like slavery was the best thing that ever happened to us, and we be in Africa wasting away, which is very untrue. So for me personally, I am going to take one step forward and change my name changing my last name because my last name is not a representation of who I am. I am going to make the person who I am and give myself a name for basically who I am in the future. So that's basically it. And we have other issues and it's something that we need to deal with. So that's basically it. All right. Thanks for sharing that, um, Janelle. Uh, you said something interesting just now that you were going to change your last name. So I know um tashika has us she says a similar last names i want her take on that particular um matter tashika, what do you think of your last name as a means of identity i mean as a miss boy <laughs> said a while ago Janelle, um 
we basically don't know where we came from because I have done research on my last name before and it's talking about some place in Ireland and all them. So I'm like, none of my family, based on how they look and based, because my, I don't know if you guys are close to your grandparents are closer with the older people, but literally they sit down and they trace where everybody came from. My grandmother, if I want to know if I'm related to somebody. She's gonna sit down and she's gonna tell me where my family came from. And the bones will, will never come from them places. So basically, it has been passed down. Like as as a black as black people, the, they, as they said that we have been stripped from I or identity and um, the is a part of it. Yeah, we are probably related for you because the Bowens, we are all over the place, to be honest. We are all over the place because I'm just responding to what she said in the chat. And I had a point to add, that's why I raised my hand. Um, togetherness, that is something that we need because a lot of the, you find that a lot of the things, even with your, with our hair, like you find that um, we are not together or united in in basically in the movement or for example if you're natural here you don't find a lot of people supporting you in terms of wanting to wear it professionally or something like that you know if you want to wear your hair they're like okay you have to do your hair to do this or you have to wear a wig or you have to do this separate you know it's it's like you are alone a lot of the time so togetherness is something in, that is very important in any aspect of you know regaining or i guess building or as black people. I agree, Tashika. And you mentioned the, the point about togetherness. I, I think I had seen Joshua Rowe uh, mention something similar earlier. Um, before I take your hand, Denise, I just want to hear from another male's um, point of view. Um, I want him to expone a little bit on that because Tashika would have touched on it, but I want to hear um, your perspective, Joshua. Um, the whole idea of a sense of community. Joshua, are you still with us? Your mic isn't, okay, you'll type. All right, so while you're typing, Denise, I'll, um, Joshua, I'll just take Denise's hand. Yeah, um, just a, a, quite a provocative question here. <laughs> <laughs> as we're discussing um, surname and so on, I know for a fact that my surname is English. So this question just came to my mind though. We know that, yes, um, some of our ancestors came from Africa as black people, right? But we can't, I don't think we should negate the fact that, you know, we have mixed her heritage. So if it is that we're going to, Using the example of changing your surname or so, is it that you're only going to take a name that suits only one side of your ancestors, or are you going to find a name that shows the mixture or something like that? I don't know if you get what I'm saying, but the truth is we are we are quite a, a diverse set of people. We are mixed for some of us, that is. So that's just something I wanted to. Two point oh. So I just would like to hear your views on that. Um, you're directing that at Janelle, correct? Or yeah, no, it's not just Janelle, but anybody would like to share as well. Okay, I'll I'll take Janelle's hand and then I'll come back to Tashika. All right. So I do agree with you wholeheartedly because. For me, I have, I have a lot of races in my family. Like, I know where, which and which races we, we, we are mixed with. But at the end of the day, I don't really appreciate the fact that, that we came, that we were that we stolen from Africa, right? And a name, we were stripped from our name. We were stripped from our, our language, right? And we are here now. And yet still, we know nothing about that. Name, we just know that it's kind of, it, it, it's if associated with slavery, right? So, being who I am today, I am not. I'm not only a part. I'm not only uh, um, a, a person who. Oh, well, I'm a product of Africa. I'm a product from, from India. I'm a product from China. 
So all those all those people will come together and make me who I am. Plus how I am socialized. Mm-hmm. I'm going to create that need for myself because I know where I am at. I'm not going to be someone who the English wanted me to be. I'm their name is not me. Get what I'm saying? Because if you go back to learning what last names mean in in um in in Ireland and, and in, in English, they created those names because of what they were doing. Because they didn't have last names, you know. They made up their that last name and then say, "Oh, this this is me. This is my generation." So I cannot I cannot keep this name because I I I'm not associated with it per se. So I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but if you do, yeah, I can explain further. Or you can just do some research. Well, in the interest of discussion, I would love if you would expound further, um, Janet. All right. So if I'm gonna go back to probably Scottish, Irish. So back in those times, they were the Carlos people. Um it, it was the midi- medieval time, I should say. You hear me? Hello? Mm, yeah. Okay. It was a medieval time. They didn't have a, they didn't have last names, right? They 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 fight a lot. They, they did all, all of those stuff. And what they did is whatever that that family or what that person did, whatever John did to to um to, to probably kill a dragon or to probably um slay something, they would they, they would name him um Sir Anthony um Bowen or Sir Anthony um James, right? Because that's what he did. And he, his family now comes along, they got they get that last thing because that surname wasn't just say, oh I'm I'm this, right? So that is that person, that is that family, that's that that's their history. But when you come to a, a, a island, a Caribbean country that you claim that you discovered, which was not discovered, right? Then I and you go to a different um continent and say, oh. I, I, I am taking these people forcefully and stripping them of their language, of their name, of their culture, of everything, and you just give them a last name. I don't feel like that's right. Because you, you, you that, that's, just, that's just right to me personally. But it, this is more historically based. And for you to, for, for you to basically um, understand what I'm trying to say, you have to go back into history, you have to read the documents, Right, mm-hmm. documentations to understand these stuff. So this is basically an entire discussion separate apart from this um Zoom Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get that, Janelle. Um, very very interesting points. I think Kimisha wants to win on this. I'll, I'll allow her to go ahead. All right, hi. Um, I understand what she's saying. Um, but while Scottish and them people never have the last name, Africans had their family name. And if we're looking at name, we can also say that not only last names are not African based, you have bring, like Kimisha is not an African name. Like what I was saying is that Africans used to have names with meaning, right? Meaning. So if me, if I think that you're my hope, my last child, and maybe a name would say blessing or something, right? We have we we can't negate the fact that we still came here we are still a part of this caribbean identity that we are in now right so whatever we are today is caribbean first of all and i thought one of the main major thing we are our caribbeans are always trying to like i identify with this i identify with that but what what are you now what is your culture now like if you understand what i'm trying to say right we we are here sadly we get take away whatever but we're here now We've developed. We have. We're, we're here for a lot of time. What are we now? What do? What is our culture now? What do you want to pass down to your? Yeah, <clears throat> excellent, excellent point, uh, Kimish. And one of the things that I'm not sure how many of you would have done or have any background in sociology, but one of the things that you learn in sociology is that. But as, yeah, right. So like Israel and whatever, whatever. So, but I think 
in our identity problem is that we're not looking at that. As somebody said, we are a mixture. No matter how we don't like it, them tea, food, they whatever, we are a mixture. And within this environment, we were social, socialized. We are something different. We're different. If you look on TikTok, Africa, some Africans no one claim we. So what we are gonna do? <laughs> you mean? So yeah. I, I I take your point, um, Kimisha, but not but um just in extension of that. I'm not sure how many of you would have, you know, a, a sociological background. Um, but one of the things you learn is that culture isn't isn't frozen. It isn't static, right? It's something that that grows and changes. Very, it's very fluid, right? So as as you you you, you rightfully said, we're no longer there. Yes, our ancestors would have been, you know, taken from Africa, um, but we are here now so the onus is on us to chart our, our, our path going forward and i mean for, for those of us who are you know conscious of you know our past and you know the, the implications that it would have on us in the present the, the onus is really on us to not so much be disgruntled about what happened yes what happened was pretty horrific um, in, in many ways, in many ways, more than one. But we're here now, and we're in the present now. So the onus is really on us, you know, to decide our future and what we want to do going forward. All right. So just going back to Joshua's point, you know, I saw that he put in the chat that, you know, as a nation, we're we're so easy to, you know. Let me find back his um, response. Yeah, so we're we're so we become very easy to resort to conflicts. But in in that in that sense, though, is it is it a national thing or is it a, a racial thing? Because there, I think it's it's easy to forget that nationality and race aren't they're not necessarily mutually exclusive, but they're at the same time they're not one they're not the one in the same. So. It's it's um it's very nuanced, and I take your point that we're not usually as a nation. I don't want to racialize this, but as a nation, um, we are very passionate and we can be very supportive, but at other times we are very much um, combative. If if you want to, to to leave it like that, so I do take your point, Joshua, that a lot of times there can be. You know, a lot of strife between us as a nation, and we tend to be very, very much competitive. All right, so Tashik, I remember you had your hand up. Um, I'll allow you to go now. I mean, Janelle basically um, talked about it, so I, I literally have nothing to add. <laughs> All right, um, Denise, you said, you mentioned that we have other nationalities here. Um, who are the known Jamaicans among us? Well, you're asking me, or are you asking them to identify themselves? I would like to assume, but just to, not you know um Ajay, i'll just like you to just come on and just tell us maybe a little bit about the demographic makeup of your um country um hi everyone so ghana is mainly indians and blacks but i honestly if I, the percentage of which one is more, I really don't know, but they're very, very close. But then we are made up of six races. So technically, even though Blacks and Indians are the main races, we also have Portuguese, European, Amerindian, and Chinese. So it's six races in all. So um, <laughs> when you guys are talking about, you know, wanting to find out where you're from, I'm over here like, mm, well, I'm all those six races. I'm I'm six of those races. My mom is three and my dad is the other three. So I'm like, mm, I if I had to pick a last name from wherever I was, I'd have a very long um, name. But um, that's really how it is here. The Chinese, they only make up about 1%. But I would say because of all the businesses 
the Chinese mm-hmm. businesses that are coming in. I feel like we have more Chinese people than that are like not actually Guyanese Chinese, but they're just like straight Chinese. And then we also have a lot of Indians who are like not Guyanese Indians, but they're actually coming in from India now. So the cultural makeup here, it's very diverse. It is, it's really diverse. We have public holidays for Diwali, which is for the Hindus. We have Muslim holidays. So it's, it's really, you know, truly diverse. So we don't really have much, I don't want to say much education specifically towards, you know, like Black History Month. I don't think I've ever, I never heard of that. That was always like an American <laughs> kind of thing. I literally only learned about that from the internet. We never, we're never taught it in schools because it's like, Indians are also equally as important. And I think the other day we had like a rival day as like a holiday, but then some federation or some group of people were just like, no, that's, it's not just a rival day. It's specifically Indian arrival day. So we then we had to have a whole switcheroo of this national holiday to be like, it's specifically just Indians. It's not just a rival day. So I guess because it's very diverse, I like coming to these sessions so I can see how, you know, <laughs> black history is around the world because really and truly here we are i guess we're just taught about it like oh yeah slavery but then we're also like oh emancipation and oh the indians were also brought here too so yeah that's kind of how it is in Ghana. (laughs) oh i i am very enlightened by that um adriel i I hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly i'm seeing denise is asking you to pronounce your last name Is it? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. It's Adriel Lachman Singh. Lachman Singh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So that's Lachman Singh, Denise. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm I'm very appreciative of you sharing because for us in Jamaica, I know that's very interesting for us. We do have a, a semi-diverse population. The majority of the population is, you know, the black, and, but we do have Indians and Chinese and even um, people from the white race as well, the Caucasian race. So I, that's very interesting to us. And then the fact that you're saying that you didn't really, for you, Black History Month was something Americanized. That's also very uh, interesting to me. And I'm sure the other Jamaicans among us can relate to that as well because Black History Month has always been such a monumental um, remembrance for us um, annually. So thank you for sharing that, um, Adriel. All right, so we have had a very um passionate discussion here um this afternoon does anyone want to share anything else before we we close all right it seems that we're all talked out all right guys so i'm seeing denise has sent the register in the chat so just ensure that you fill that up before 4 30 um, p.m uh but we've had a very interesting discussion here this afternoon guys and i'm really thankful to all of those who all of you guys who would have shared come on the mic and you know type in the chat um very very interesting stuff as always we always have more interesting um, things in store for you. So next week and the, the consecutive weeks that will follow, um, we have more interesting things lined up for you. So ensure that you guys keep coming to club meeting 2 p.m. on the dot. We begin every week. So without further ado, I thank you guys for coming and I will see you all next week. <laughs>